Hello everyone. Uh, we are going to meet the team of Rivers of India, which has come out with a song on the Rivers of India, as the title says. Uh, we are going to talk to them about uh, the origin of the song and what this means to uh, them. So we'll start with uh, Mr. Kanix. I'm the composer of this uh, music. Yeah. 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 Um, um, first of all, greetings to everyone, and uh, thank you, Mr. Sudan, for, for uh, um, having us on this call. Um, so I am a composer based in the United States, and uh, I graduated from IIT Madras in 1984. Um, so it's been a long time, and uh, I so we came out with this video called Rivers of India in support of the Center for Clean Water, the International Center for Clean Water, and. Uh, um, this is uh, um, <clears throat> so I, I've been doing uh, mu music related work for the past 20, 25 years. I've uh, created okay. new works based on Indian ragas in a Western setting. So I've created symphonic works for large orchestras and large choirs, and I've gotten them performed around the country and around the world also. And uh, oh. Um, at, on Jan first last year, we did a program for IIT Madras itself, so which was which I coordinated remotely, and uh, in um, yeah, so that's my background with this. Can you give a brief brag background about yourself and how you came to be associated with this project? So, see, typically I'm a music producer. I direct, I produce. I used to compose, but. I don't do anything nowadays because I've been just drifting along where music takes me in my life. I wanted to be a tabla player. I wanted to be a keyboard player. I wanted to be a composer. So I've been through most of it and probably God chose me to be in a field where I could have an eagle's eye perspective of music. That's the way I would like to call it. So being a percussionist myself, being a melody maker myself, a person who can play the piano, who can arrange. So knowing all of this later in my life, I realized that I went through this journey of music learning and appreciating music and creating music to be the best in the field that I've taken in as my profession, which is sound engineering and music production. So sound engineering and music production meets, it's not about technology, music production or uh, sound engineering is not about technology. It's again an art form. I always tell people that I sculpt sound. I don't tweak knobs, you know. So for all that you need to know music and uh, it is very important that I should also appreciate somebody else's music and not judge somebody else's music. See, my job is when I make music, it's very easy to put our perspective into somebody else's thought process. It may, it may help, it may not help, it may hurt, it may not hurt the composer. So it is a very thin and fine line. So in all, my job is a person who is in the eagle's eye perspective of everything that happens under my umbrella. So that's a music producer, engineer's job, direction's job. I have known Kanik sir for many years now. And... I was first approached by him for one of his projects that he did with his daughter. So he wanted some layers of Indian percussion to be added, mixed and mastered. That's how we started. And when I knew him at first, I was very, very, very uh, happy to see somebody who was extremely genuine in musicality. See, there are two things when you see a musician or a composer. I am not uh, talking in praise because he's on screen, I deal with a lot of music composers and directors. One thing is how talented they are. The other thing is how much they want to be up there and in the front and they would do anything to be present. Okay. But very, very few people are there who, despite being recognized or not recognized, despite being known or unknown, keeps doing very, very genuine quality of work and excellent compositions and excellent work that has been churning. So having known Mr. Kanix, he's a fantastic composer who has a lot of soul. 
So composition is not merely about how great intellectually it could be, but end of the day, music is something that is very important when somebody who even doesn't know music, when they listen to a song, it has to touch them. It has to give a very feel good feeling. So that's the whole purpose of art and music, any art form for that matter. So whenever Kanik sir approaches me and says, we need to do a project, I never say no to him because number one, he's a very, very, very nice person. Number two, all his compositions are soul touching. Uh, there is something to it that that has simplicity and that also reaches out to people. And it uh, even this composition, if you see, it's very simple that even a child could sing, a seven-year-old child can sing. But at that same time, my father, who is 76, who is not a very a big connoisseur of music said the song is so beautiful. So th that also is important to have in a composition and Kanik sir has that beautiful, um, you know, a blessing in him that whatever he composes is very beautiful. Okay. So that's how I jumped into the project when he said I had to produce and, you know, get the whole project going. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Kanik had already put everything in place. He had composed the song. He said, this is where I want the chorus and this is the music. And he explained to me how pollution comes and raga changes and very, very, uh, very clear notes on what he wanted. Hmm. And later on, my job was to pitch in my ideas to him on suggesting who the artists would be. And initially it was a galaxy of artists across India who had to come and sing, which was typically a cliche happening all through the Corona period, you know, compositions where a lot of artists would come in something in me instantly said that it has to be a combination of just very minimal and classic artists from India, just one or two representatives or not more. The biggest blessing I had was I had no um, resistance from the composer or IIT Madras when I shared an idea. See, one, one thing is I can always share an idea. The mm. other thing is it's up to people to accept it or not. So the blessing for me was nobody said no to anything that I had suggested. So uh, the credit doesn't go to me. The credit goes to people who have accepted to do this project. You know, my job was just to initiate ideas. Mm -hmm. So when I had initiated that it, it could be a mother and son singing, because I really have seen a lot of father son projects coming out for eons and eons. I've never okay. seen uh, mother and son in music videos or compositions or even cassette releases from days of cassettes to CDs that I've grown up with rarely seen mother-son combination. At that time, the first thought that came to me was Kaushiki Ji and uh, her son. Mm. Uh, because very recently, last year, I had worked on some other project with her. So instantly that flashed on to me. And when I thought of South Indian singer, I thought, okay, Amrit is there and Bombay Jai Shri Ji is there. Why don't I ask them? So without hesitation, I just sent them a message saying there's a project like this. And if it would be very nice and it would be a blessing on us if they would accept to sing it. Very kind of them that the project got executed. They were very, very happy to participate. And I would say having icons like that, you know, people who are ambassadors of Indian music across the world, somebody like Kaushiki Chakravarti Ji and Bombay Jayashri Ji has made a huge difference to the project because the same composition is not sung by celebrity singers. And it's not merely about presence online, but also somebody who can bring that emotion that we wanted in the composition was completely justified by both of them. So that is how this project kind of came into, uh, it funneled down. And I did the instrumentation, played instruments, you know, the COVID time, I could not call many artists into the studio. So this is how the project shaped up. Okay. I think more to Kaushiki Ji so that, you know, we can save her time on this interview. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, uh, can you talk about how, why you chose this project, said yes to it? Uh, because during this lockdown, we have seen so many music projects happening uh, in a similar vein. So what made you say yes for this particular one? See, first of all, uh, my first reason to say yes to this was Saiji. Because uh, we worked on something else uh, two years back, I think, mm. and uh, and it was because of that project that I primarily got introduced to Saiji, 
and you know that is when uh, we started sharing musical ideas and that is how i uh, felt very uh, comfortable working with him purely for the reason that a person whose whose musical ideas are very uh, clear number 1 and number 2 he is extremely respectful towards a piece of music and he justifies everyone's role and uh, you know the the importance of that role and it does not depend on the time of the role that is being played so the the significance of the role is given full justification and the comfort of that artist is taken care of and that is that is why because the the project that we were doing together was not one of the the kind of projects that i do normally which is genuinely you know purely into the classical music you know it was a very experimental like a i had never done anything like that before so i was very uh, scared to start with but how it panned out uh, i had totally i totally had fun and uh, he made sure that you know i i get introduced to the musical space in a very careful way so that nothing came as a shock to me but okay. when the end product was done it was quite a different sound quite a different kind of uh, ideas melting out i mean kind of coming together in a melting pot kind of a project but to begin with his idea of my role and the entire sound of the project was so clear why i thought that you know uh, this is one person i can completely rely on when it comes to creating a piece of music with his kind of understanding and sensibility he will do only if he believes in a in a in a project and if he is telling me that this is something that he wants to do and he wants me to sing in this that was enough reason for me to have trust in this project Okay. So that was in the beginning. That was my reason to say yes. And secondly, of course, the cause that it is, uh, I, I would always think that you know, uh, the time that we are in, it is important. I really don't know for times to come how huge the impact of a song like this would have on the society. But I think even small efforts, if they are consistently made. small messages but if they are consistently shared with the society somewhere the awareness i mean i will tell you something personal experience that when we were growing up when i was in my teens like in my son's age my awareness about the environment about the global warming about pollution about how to kind of take care of certain you know the elements of our nature how to take care of our planet to be honest i was not aware of so many things and i believe that our entire generation we did not have the kind of awareness that our you know next generation has because of these small efforts that were made from different you know uh, corners of the society so these messages we we don't look for these messages we come across these messages so it is only possible for the society to come across many such messages when loads of them are being made maybe each of them will not have a huge impact but all of them put together will have some sort of an impact in the society in terms of creating awareness mm-hmm. so i believe in the importance and the necessity of such messages being created and so that was the second reason okay. and third it was a very personal uh, kind of a a mother instinct that made me happy that mm-hmm. somebody like saiji considered my son to be you know able enough to sing even one line of the song which okay. was a extremely uh, it gave me a lot of confidence because to start with i will uh, saiji would know that my first reaction was i mean i'm not sure whether he should really be able to sing or not and i said mm-hmm. i asked him are you sure he'll be able to sing and he said you just have to leave it to me i i will kind of place it in a way that that he is comfortable because mm-hmm. he is he's a a very small child b his primary interest uh, for for the last many years like since he was 3 or 4 years old has been tabla so if it was something to do with tabla i would have felt more confident 
Mm-hmm. But singing has he has started recently, like for the last one, one and a half, two years maybe. He just okay. he started taking more interest in singing. So I was not very sure whether he will be able to sing. And mm-hmm. singing with me is a casual thing in the sense that you know I am his mother, so I will whatever he sings, I'll feel good about. Mm. But to collaborate with somebody as iconic and as respected as Jeshree Ji uh, on a song for Rishit, you know, I don't even uh, know whether he realizes what it is. I mean, I'm sure in the years to come when he will grow up and he'll look back and he'll find this song. I think he will then realize what it means to him because, honestly speaking, this is my first song with Jeshree. Okay. So that yeah. became our first song with Jeshree Ji, which is. which is such a huge blessing for me and of course for rishi so mm. all these things came together and i thought that you know it's worth giving it a shot and let's see you know if the message gets across and if uh, you know we can come together to create something that will have a little bit of a value to our society and to the awareness that we're trying to create okay mm-hmm. yeah. so what kind of brief did mr kanix have for you when it came to this singing part of the song i all the briefs that i had was from sai ji oh so, okay you know i only Actually, went the interesting part is that uh, uh, kaushik ji this is the first time we are interacting on zoom um, right. see like sai mentioned at the beginning i sang the composition and uh, the, created the work on logic and sent it out to sai and then sai contacted you and bombay jayesh i had a conversation with bombay jayesh who i have known for a long time um mm-hmm. but i didn't get a chance to speak with you but it actually gave me a wonderful opportunity to interact with your father uh, my mm-hmm. god we uh, i just called him for like uh, for, to speak with him for like 5 minutes and then he just went on and on for about 45 minutes just going oh, on and on about the, he just couldn't stop uh, praising the song because the thing is this song has stuck an emotional chord in all of us and uh, i really wanted to share it with you but at least now we have a chance to uh, uh, talk about it so uh, see ajay ji and i were resonating with the ideas so see we were naming rivers from um, uh, west bengal like damodar and stuff like that see i had been in kgp a long time ago and i've seen the dvc Dam- damodar valley project and all that so uh, ajay ji was going how did he get this river how did he get that river and how did the words align in tune it, yeah it's quite fascinating how a song has yeah. no lyrics but only names of rivers <laughs> uh-huh. and if one wouldn't know if I'm, i mean just let's assume i'm from some country and i have no idea yeah. about any name of of i mean any name of rivers from india i would think mm-hmm. that this is a beautiful song where the words you know they sound so beautiful and this they, they they sound like they were created to kind of be in the sequence that they are you know it's like a yeah. proper meaningful sentence it doesn't sound like you know words you know put together just to you know fit into a meter and of course the uh, meter as a singer i would say that it there hasn't been even one place where the meter was you know even for lyricists when they when they mm-hmm. send songs when we sing it we sometimes have to send them back maybe one line or two mm-hmm. lines saying that you know this is good as words but while we are trying to sing it it just it's not comfortable to sing because words that can be spoken and words that can be sung are yeah. a little different because you know with the musical idioms with the notes mm-hmm. and with the with the, how the melody is weaved together sometimes some words they don't fit in in the sense you'll have to kind of right. push them to fit into the to the to the singing mode but mm-hmm. not even a single place there hasn't there hasn't been a single place in the song where the words and the and the melody and the meter and the flow of it mm-hmm. as smooth as any river from our country okay, that is real high comp- that's really a high compliment from you kaushiki ji thank you thank you so much um, so the, the thing is see even when i was writing it i could feel the flow and uh, that's exactly what what bombay jayeshri also said like she could feel the flow of the rivers in her body in herself as well as outside also mm-hmm. while she was singing it and that is the feeling i had while writing it as well as while teaching it to a few other people uh, mm-hmm. to a lot of lot of other people here in the us and one other thing if i may add is that the the we have a concept called antya prasa in in sanskrit where the last syllable has to rhyme Yeah. that also fell in place if it's an r ah, the next line is also an r ah, and there's there's also a few other alankaras like the uh, maha nadi comes on ma 
pampa comes on pa and uh, all the kind of stuff so it, it was like i think we, we are together collectively all of us on the screen are voicing the spirit of the veneration that india has had for rivers because if that has not been um, uh, part of our epigenetics we would not be celebrating the rivers like this and you know one more thing is that uh, whether you're from the south of or the north or, or the east or the west this is a topic that everybody can relate to ganga and yamuna and then uh, the first of course the first seven rivers but everything else also falling falling along like whether it's hooghly or whether it's uh, mahanadi or whether it's tamraparni or anything like that i mean there's a lot of rivers uh, that you cannot cover i mean every single river in india has not been covered we know that because there are many many small rivers which are also worshiped um but thanks but to you i got to learn so many names of the rivers which otherwise i wouldn't have known <laughs> oh, i didn't know you. there was i mean they sounded like nice sanskrit words but i had yeah. no idea that their names of rivers which i got to learn so thanks to you well thank you and thanks and thanks to you that many more people uh, will will listen to it and then hopefully sing along with it and get the words as well so. yeah so how long did it take for you to put these words together into a proper uh, tune see actually i was inspired one evening when i was teaching something else to someone and then i said okay let me create an easy song that people can relate to so how about something like ganga ganga jamuna and mm. i mean that's that is literally the phrase that crossed the crossed through my mind so i mean he sang ganga yamuna without hesitation i sang the second line sindhu kaveri then then i remember the shloka which which has the seven rivers the names of the seven rivers in it oh then narmada godavari then how will saraswati come in rhythm no problem shri saraswati so the shri actually completed the pallavi of the song then i i, I think it was while traveling in a plane or something that i wrote down most of it then i had to go to the computer to check the names of some of the rivers and make sure that I, i was getting them right so mm. i would say this was probably done in a weekend or something like that oh and, great yeah and then when i came back from uh, texas see texas is where i got the idea of teaching the song because many years ago i created another song called gange which is a pretty complex and we had a tough time teaching it to uh, an amateur choir of about 30 people so that's when i thought we need to create something easy but this ended up being more difficult than that because the song looks easy from outside but it takes um, a lot understanding a lot of nuances to sing it the way to that reflects the flow okay so as soon as i came back from chicago i completed it over the weekend next weekend we went on zoom and we taught it to like 30 people assembled there and oddly enough that was the last session ever before the pandemic hit after that nobody could get together in a group to sing this so that was the first time i heard people singing together as a group and origin my original idea was when i was writing this song this was meant to be i mean as soon as i wrote the pallavi it became clear that this had to be an in a uh, invocation song in a program that we were going to have at the end of 2020 at iit madras that mm-hmm. nandu and i had talked about during a 35th year reuni- reunion last year so i was oh. hoping that in iit madras there will be like 100 people standing on st- stage and there'll be one lead singer in front who will mm-hmm. be singing this um or two lead singers in front singing this but that was never to happen maybe it will happen sometime in the future and maybe kaushiki will come to chennai and sing it along with bombay jays in front of the huge choir but uh, uh yeah thank you and but but the live thing has not happened yet uh and but this is this has happened and i think this is happened in a way that has uh, um i don't know i think it's brought a joy a lot of joy to a lot of people and i hope it continues to do also so how did I- iccw become part of this project was this always the uh, project that was commissioned by them or something like that or see um over the years i've done huge productions in the us one the biggest one is called shanti a journey of peace which about with about 250 people on stage and uh, um it's a huge chorus celebrating the cultural history of india and then last year i did one called no few years ago i did one called so you all forgot in 2020 um uh, 2019 i did one called muras which was for the world tamil conference um again with 200 people on stage celebrating the 2500 year old tamil cultural hi- literary history um then um so, so when i met nanda kumar during our 35th year batch reunion at iit last year so the idea stuck me why don't we do something for the center for clean water that he is heading um mm-hmm. so that it, it a it will help build awareness about water 
we it will build awareness about the center and the great work that the center is doing many in the in chennai don't even know that um, this kind of work is happening and see raise help raise funds for the center which is needed because by creating a music awareness uh, a music show which is witnessed by a couple of thousand people and broadcast worldwide hopefully the alumni will get together and donate so that is the conversation we had over tea at, mm. in pondicherry when we had uh, gotten together last year and then he said yeah connects let's do it and uh, then the pandemic came and that was the end of it and then but in july i called him and say hey nandu why don't we talk about doing something uh, on video and he said yeah come let, let us do it man and uh, that is how i'll nandul can speak more about it i am i am extremely grateful that this has happened uh, thank you kaushiki ji once again in fact uh, this is uh, a dream for me coming true uh, because uh, you know this i just give you a brief about the center for clean water uh, which was created 2 years ago uh, the, it's a not for profit organization and uh, it is really a platform where anybody can engage whether it's a corporate or a government or an individual so that uh, we we take all ideas on board and uh, provide the, the world with clean water so that is our mission we are all working for a social cause and it is very very tough okay because water is considered free and we want to promote uh, conservation of water we want to promote uh, you know non pollution of rivers so kanix of course we studied together in iit and uh, after that we drifted apart he went to the us i continued to work in india i worked in itc for many years and i came to know ajay da um, Kaushiki ji, your your daddy, and he had performed in Tribeni Tissues, where I worked for several years, and he was with the Sangeet Research Academy also. I think he was one of the uh, pioneers there. So, so end of that day, you know, it was a very small world for me to reconnect, and I spent several years in Calcutta, and I, I really quite uh, enjoyed the fact that you would be singing for this uh, event, and we were trying to see how to get a national present. So. when kanix and i first talked about it as he said it was supposed to be a physical uh, event and we plan to have an annual conference every year in december and we said we should have some cultural show and how do we bring about awareness of water conservation and uh, kanix of course during uh, i met him when, about 10 years ago kanix in, in our silver jubilee and that's when i came to know, he showed me on his blackberry some of the concerts that he had done and i was floored that's the time i came to know that he has really you know gone miles ahead in music and from a metallurgical engineer and uh, i think truly you know that was a transformation and slowly i started getting involved in the kind of work he is doing in uh, the us i could see it on youtube i'm quite fascinated by the kind of work he is doing and i was completely you know bowled over when he said he's going to conduct some kind of a program for the center to to create awareness and to probably get some people to contribute and participate in the activities of the center unfortunately covid struck and we didn't know what to do and uh, this uh, event actually blessing in disguise i would say that we were able to now create an, a, a kind of a, a, a musical video which is reaching a much wider audience and we we spent a lot of time i'm saying women kanik said sai shavanam is going i didn't know sai at that time and uh, he said sai shavanam is uh, you know going to be taking charge of the music production and so on i'm not much of i love music classical and otherwise but i don't know much about the you know scene behind the scenes and uh, so once we got together i think i i i sort of stepped back and i said let these guys take charge and i enjoyed every conversation we had in terms of how it was getting shaped up mm-hmm. and it was excruciating for me because of the delays that were happening you know we wanted to launch it in august 15th last year we said independence day okay. is a good time okay then we said diwali then we said you know new year's eve the, yeah. the mm. christmas new year that is the time when in chennai we have this music festival and we mm. thought that would be a great time then we went on and on finally we could only do it in april and it's come fantastic mm. and uh, i mean my my wife is uh, she saw the video and she said i want to contribute some money to the center immediately <laughs> so i was touch i said you know it's it's if this was so easy to convince my wife i mean you know <laughs> this is the ultimate uh, <laughs> you know kind of uh, compliment for for this video and uh, i i think we have many miles to go now i think this has set some standards as i keep saying it we have set a new standard and uh, i'm very glad to be part of it in a very small way and uh, we hope that we could have several such 
you know, coming out in the future. And uh, the idea is that India as a nation is, is quite emotional and we, we want to help yeah. each other a lot. You know, we are not the business-like uh, kind of people. We are very, very sentimental and we, we see the power of emotions in driving change. Mm. And this is something which I very strongly believe will drive change. And we want to, you know, keep promoting this different fora and uh, keep people remind. I don't think I will ever get tired of listening to it. And oh. out of whatever 50, 60,000 views, maybe a few thousand, maybe mine, I don't know. Maybe I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but it's something like that. Okay. Mm. So, so that's, that's my sum and substance of, you know, the experience and uh, uh, the outcome that I'm uh, looking forward to. And uh, I think it's, so it's you, just a beginning. So you made this video during the pandemic. So uh, how was that experience? What was the concept uh, that you had? See, I, I'll tell you this just before this happened. Kanik put up some chaitram, chitram, chitram. Yeah. So he had, uh, he was in the US and we had a, we had a reunion and he had done everything remotely through Google mm -hmm. Forms and Google Connect. And he had mm -hmm. put a chorus together and, but the chorus performed in person, but the entire training happened on online. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that somehow gave me the confidence that COVID or no COVID music, we can connect. Mm. Okay, we don't need physical presence. And uh, it, it's, I mean, uh, it, I, I was not part of any shooting. Okay, mm -hmm. nothing. But end of the day, I somehow felt that the connection was always there. Every mm. conversation, every, uh, you know, small snippets that they used to share with me, uh, experiences, and uh, the way that uh, Sai used to say that, you know, the performance has been outstanding. I mean, he's the judge, of course, on and he says when uh, he saw individual recordings and he gave his feedback and connects, that's all I needed. Mm -hmm. So the only drawback, as I can tell you, is the time that we spent on this. Otherwise, uh, it was I didn't feel that the, the COVID in any way prevented us from working together. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. So, Kaushiki yeah. so go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Kaushiki ji, you mentioned about you were about how thrilled you were to be singing along with your son. So how yeah. was the experience shooting with him? Was it the first time he was facing the camera? Uh, he was more comfortable with the camera uh, and I was more uh, kind of comfortable seeing him in front of camera, but I was really stressed seeing him in front of the mic. That okay. was, uh, that was the, <coughs> that the stressful bit. The recording part was, you know, I wanted him to sing the best he could. Mm. But poor thing, he is never... He never sang with a huge headphone on. So he was like, <laughs> we all have had this problem. We all have been, you know, cut off from the, uh, the environmental sound. We, you know, people who have recorded in a studio would know. And especially for us who are generally used to singing for an audience or singing for even smaller audiences, even at home or with the mind, the amplification with the room reverb and with the, with the, environmental sounds that are with the uh, that we hear with the song the moment you put put a mic uh, a headphone on it kind of cuts you off from all everything else and even the sound of your breath becomes like a huge asthmatic sound yeah so, and this poor thing he doesn't know how to control that so he's breathing like and you know it's it's sounding so huge and i didn't want to uh, use technology to to okay. cover them up i wanted him to learn so i would rather take this as an opportunity for him to learn and for me to kind of work on it so that because these things we these things we can't learn at home these mm -hmm. things we will only learn when we are in a studio because how to wear a microphone uh, how to wear a headphone and how to uh, you know place a microphone and then you know words like ha and bha you know, they, they, you need to use the angle and you need to kind of, you can't go away from the microphone. There are so many technicalities that, you mm. know, I had learned in the process of working in the studio mm. and then, of course, while performing. So these things, I just, it was unrealistic on my part to expect, but I was expecting everything to happen like a magic <laughs> with Rishil when we were in the studio. So I was thinking, why is he not being able to do it? And mm. I thought that we go to the studio, it's the Shrutiranjan studio, uh, it's my father's institution and that's the studio we generally use. I mean, now thanks to 
uh, the situation we are completely stuck at home and i have a small uh, studio set up at home so that's where i'm recording everything but when we were recording this things were a little easier and then we could at least go to the studio and then there i i thought that we'll go one evening and mm. first i will let rishit record his part and then i will record my part and we'll be over and done with it but we took two days only to record rishit <laughs> okay uh huh So, oh, Shikithi, I, can I make an observation I, here? Yes, please. I, I mean, I'm listening to you. When, when you were, when I saw the video of your recording, I saw your gaze fixed on your son with so much of, you know, uh, love and care. That's really adding a dimension. But somewhere wow. behind it, I see some concern also from what you're saying that oh, yeah, performing for the first yeah, time. Oh yeah, that is a concern as uh, more, less as a mother, but more as a singer. And yeah more as a teacher you know more as somebody yeah. who's responsible for uh, how good he can sing who feels responsible mm-hmm. as a teacher because you know i've i've always been on the disciple uh, side when it comes to my father and me and uh, as sai ji said and since he had mentioned it i was thinking that uh, in the classical music space i don't know any other mother and son uh, combination i really don't know of anyone and when i'm saying i don't know i i feel the responsibility because i when i'm making a, a statement like this as a practicing mm-hmm. musician i understand the responsibilities of it and i haven't seen a mother and son uh, duo kind of duo in the sense uh, you know a legacy that is being carried for a mother's legacy which is being carried yeah. forward by the son in the classical music space so you know it may, now now that i'm thinking about it it makes me more nervous <laughs> no I, i think you couldn't nobody could have put it any better than this it's so beautifully expressed yeah, yeah so that yeah. is why you know as a mother i feel uh, protective i feel uh, i feel the love i feel the affection i feel everything i mean uh, and you know i think i will sound very very sentimental and emotional and rubbish maybe uh, mm. maybe very uh, dramatic if i say but you know i really think that the bonding that i personally share with my son is is very special to me as it is with any mother but it kind of adds certain layers to it uh, when the mother's affection i mean i have seen the father's role as a guru but the mother's role as a guru as a teacher i think it has a little more uh, nuanced layers mm-hmm. which makes it a uh, special of course which makes it little more difficult for both the sides to balance it out in a proper way because the mother is the refuge even if you are angry with your father you go to your mother but when you are angry with your mother where do you go okay so mm-hmm. from a child's perspective and that too from a from a boy's perspective and that age group is entering pre i mean who's who's in pre teens and it's a very dramatic age for boys so all that kept in in mind and the times that has changed i mean when i was a daughter and with my with my father the kind of dynamic that it was it still is more or less the same i mean when he speaks i keep quiet and i don't <laughs> even need to say yes because no is not even an answer yes is but it's not required because whatever he said <laughs> is a is a dictum and it's even a yes is sometimes superfluous so i don't say it but it's not the same with this time and it's never the same between a mother and a child mm-hmm. whatever the gender of the child is because a mother is a place where you can fight where you can say no i don't want to do this so it's like that <laughs> so so all this kind of makes it a little uh, i mean i realized newer layers of of understanding motherhood since i've uh, started actively teaching him singing mm-hmm. because then the balancing act becomes you know a little more i feel more careful about it. okay so that was you know in the studio all these were happening i mean i was thinking in one point that you know he's just a small child he's just barely started and then at the same time i'm thinking no but i think if he works hard if he focuses more he can do better <laughs> and i have the trust that he has it in him but he's not kind of you know making the effort that he needs to make and but i think everything said and done my ultimate satisfaction i told this to saiji and i think i i i want to go on records and this is 
this makes me happy as a mother and i think it will make everyone here and everyone who would know about it happy for a generation who are growing up with these sensibilities right. because you know we as a parenting generation we must be doing something you know something right along the way we must be learning something right together as a parent Correct. children which makes my son listen to this song i mean you know in this pandemic situation bichara he can't go to school he can't meet his uh, friends and he can't have a normal life which i think is more necessary for their age group than ours because we can kind of make sense of what is going on they can't so they're missing out on everything that's normal for them so in this time i just thought that if i share uh, you know the feedback that the song has got with him he will feel good that you know he will feel nice that people are loving his song and that you know it will be an inspiration and motivation for him so i played the song again and then i was reading out some of the youtube uh, comments which are you know nice and motivating and beyond a point after listening to the song he kept quiet for some time and he said mama i think if now that he is doing more practice more singing practice for the last 7 8 months i think i mean after the song happened and during the song happened i think he had started that so he said you know what i think if the song happened now then i would have been able to sing better so oh. <laughs> so that is that is what makes me really happy and i i listen to nand kumar ji and i'm sorry but you know I'll, ideally rishit would have wanted the we, song we to be played <laughs> For another six months. We we will we will do another round because <laughs> yeah. indeed now this is an opening we were looking for. We will do the next song. You know, so I'm we'll... happy that he felt that you know he felt the 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 journey. He felt the necessity of making a journey. He felt that you know one thing good kind of carved in stone is not good enough. You know you still mm. have. you have a possibility sure. of growth if you work harder you can sing the same song a little better so i think that that's what but really it puzzles me really... it really puzzles me how he can sing it better i thought he's done 100 <laughs> out of 100 so I'm maybe very, i'm, I'm really missing really something humbled, uh, you know for for you all to allow him to sing because uh, he's as i said he's very small but i'm happy in the process he understood the he first understood the discipline of of paying attention to perfection and he understands that why i was you know pushing him to do better to sing the line when my my father was there when the recording was happening my brother was the one who was recording him my mother came in so it was like a durga puja everyone the entire family was there cheer leaders cheering him yeah. up and i was the only villain saying no 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 this we can't keep again the same line so i was wow. being the bad guy there but in the process he realized why i was pushing him mm. and then after so many months of practicing singing more now he realizes that you know this is what hard work can do so in the process if a child learns this i think that's an ultimate that's ultimate as a parent and as a teacher true like uh, can yeah. i say something i think sai wanted to say yeah. something yeah i i want yeah. to say something before side says that um there's something called epiphany epiphany is that one microsecond that instant in time where where a huge brain wave occurs because of which wonderful transformations can result and i would say that that in once that one second that sai said okay let us how would it be is a wonder you called me and said kanik uh, sir how would it be if uh, kaushiki chakravarti and her son sang it i i'd not um, uh, i i didn't know that your son sang um, and i had no clue what to expect but i said this the thought that stuck in my head was okay this looks like an epiphanic moment i said yeah let's go for it so that if it had if that had not happened i think the project would not have been the same so <laughs> so all all thanks to all responsibilities i mean i'm i'm glad yeah. the song worked out otherwise all the responsibilities were you know would have been yours i think <laughs> <laughs> Yeah what I wanted to add here was what she spoke that's why I put my hand down okay. the whole family was there in the studio you know when his brother sent me the file when her mm-hmm. brother sent me the file he said everyone was there you know mm-hmm. to me it's not about in any project that I take to me it's not about whether it is uh, perfection or whether it is uh the best of music which is a byproduct but to me it was the intention for me 
I really wanted the generation to be seen in the intent of the song. Ajay Da to Kaushiki Ji to Sun. So that was the intent, number one. Number two, art has no end to perfection. You know, there is, uh, perfection is infinity. You know, yeah. it's infinity. There is nothing called perfection because when you are there perfect, there is again another perfect. When there is another perfect, there is another perfect. So perfect it's about evolution. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's evolution. To me, I loved it only because the reason I wanted him to sing was I've seen him just once. Mm -hmm. I knew he plays the tabla. I know I knew he would be a star soon as a tabla player. But I wanted that innocence of voice and singing. You know, the song, the melody that Kanikar did to Kaushiki Ji. I know. I have not interacted much with her, but I could sense what is she as a musician. So that instance, I realized that this innocence of voice will bridge the song. If you see, no matter what, whenever Rishit comes, I used to edit it for hours, not his singing, but the song and creating. Probably I am the person who would have heard it more than the sixty thousand views. You know, when you make a song, you listen to it <laughs> yeah. a zillion times. I would not fail to text Kaushiki ji. Ninety times I would text and I will not send. But sometimes I can't control. I would say, "Your son brings a smile to me." You know, every time I hear his voice. Now, that to me is as pure as nature or river or water, right. and that can never be polluted. You know. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was not about whether it's a celebrity singer and son. All of those are the ways that mind thinks, but the intent of it is generations to flow. Yes. and i could not get i could not think of three generation singer who would do justice to the song other than their family mm -hmm. i was also very scared to go and approach and ask because if it would be a small project if she would agree or not but always i just follow my conscience i would be like ask with a good intention if it works it works if it doesn't work it's not meant to work that's all you know i don't but the way it flowed to the way i knew that she would take care of her son singing i had that, i was sure about it i had no doubt about it and any portion of the song you know we must also appreciate the composition as i said you know before kaushiki ji joined any line can be sung by anybody it is so beautiful even a 7 year old can sing even somebody who has lost voice can still sing and it will sound you know that it is ganga yamuna you know it is so beautifully done that that's all i wanted to add please carry on i also wanted to mention the the um see once um the <laughs> the the final moment of wonderment was when i heard the final mix just mm -hmm. listening to the layers that sai had uh, imagined and added especially there are choruses that come in in the middle of the song and uh, every time the chorus comes it's the same tune and there's three di three different appearances that the, the chorus line has so each time he has layered the percussion to be totally different that every time that line comes in the same tune the feel is completely different of course but the final time it comes in we had arranged the global chorus of singers from around the world uh, people who had sung with me in past occasions so and when they come there's a key change and the whole thing is so dramatic uh, so it is uh, Uh, so even now we, if, if you if, if, if watching the watching the view, mo, uh, video from the standpoint of listening to every time I listen to it I see some new detail that uh, um, has has been uh, I, part of the layering process and nothing stands in the way of the music or the message or anything coming out so it's like uh, marvelous work by Sai in uh, producing the uh, project so thank you very much Sai. and this is nothing new i don't have to say this at all because every time i work with you we get the same uh, same kind of goosebumps so uh, thank you sai it's my duty sir thank you, thank you. so can you talk I, about uh, what uh, uh, bombay jayshree and amrit brought to this project uh, apart from being the uh, people who are most uh, more recognized in this uh, uh, i mean team along with kaushiki ji what did they bring to it in terms of music i'll say something very simple and then let's i talk about how the recording experience was with them see one thing is that they brought that level of finesse that uh, bombay jayshree always 
brings to her music so the flow of the rivers really came through to innovation since it and this the voice itself has a calming uh, presence and uh, coupled with her son son amrit who um, who is you know who whose who style of singing very faithfully mirrors what his mother what is what his mother does so the anuswaras and the way the the delicate glides and the curves in the music are there he's brought all those out very well uh, so and also the presence on the video makes a very big difference many people had commented about it and i'll we'll talk about the video soon after sai <laughs> talks about how the recording experience was with uh, um bombay jayshree and her son because as soon as the recording was over he called that night and said romanala pochu sir it went romanala i enjoy panni paadina and the paiya romanana paadna so that he was he was very excited it was clearly mm-hmm. excited that evening when he called and told me and the next day when i spoke with sai's wife she said the same thing sai was very happy with the way the recording went mm-hmm. yesterday evening sai so, yeah. so, so yeah so um Bombay Jay Shri Ji and me, we have been working for many number of years, and I knew what she delivers. And Kanik sir put it in the best way, you know, the aesthetics and the timidness that her voice has, you know, something that's not too much, something that's not very less, but just enough for an expression. I think she is an ace singer when it comes to that. When I approached her, when I said there is this project, again. it was an instant yes she said okay no problem and when i said amrit has to sing along she said wow are you sure i said yes <laughs> i want both of you to sing and i'm having kaushik ji ji and the, and she was very excited she said wow this is new mm. so during the covid times see the major difficulty we have now is because of home recordings i have to mention here mm. everybody says i have a studio at home and everybody buys a microphone because now with money you can buy anything you know mm-hmm. so and but i am a person who would not compromise on quality mm-hmm. i would never compromise on quality if something has to be done it has to be done perfect and it's not just that because people listen on youtube etc so when i asked bombay jay shri ji would you come to the studio and sing she was like coming to the studio can i sing and send mm. so i said no and she was very scared of corona so i said no you may have to come to the studio because i would like to be there recording you and it's very very important without hesitation both of them came to the studio and i first asked the mother to sing i said why don't you sing and she came she was very well prepared number one was we had a track recording so kanik sir had already sung it and given okay we wanted to know whether we wanted to use a male voice or a female voice Mm-hmm. we didn't know what to do about it as we discussed i told kanik sir sir let me do one thing i'll ask male and female to sing let us see which suits so i asked my wife and a common friend called mayur who is another fantastic singer both of them both came singers, and, by the way <laughs> yeah both of them had sung the track when they had sung the track i played it back and i found the track itself very excellent and when this track was sent to bombay jayshree ji she texted me saying sai the track itself is so nice why do you want me to sing <laughs> <laughs> so that was the generosity and humility of them though but we wanted their presence so i said no no you have to come so f- she had come very prepared listening to the track and she had sung when amrit sang it was just the opposite of kaushiki ji mm-hmm. she walked out of the studio <laughs> oh okay, okay. yeah she was out in the balcony and amrit was very excited singing this and that and i went out and i i was like what happened i thought she was on a call and 15 minutes past 20 minutes past i really wish kaushiki ji was there listening to this story <laughs> you know <laughs> i went out and then um, i asked her en ka ulla varliya then she was like illa sai let him sing free you know he will have if i sit you know he may be conscious no you both you do whatever you want i said no you come you sit and see how recording happens it was so amazing to see bombay jayshri ji actually not even interfere one percent mm-hmm. in what amrit was singing or suggesting him to sing or giving him ideas both are amazing see the amazing part of the song is 
look at the story you had from kaushiki ji and look at the story that i am telling you mm-hmm. look at the emotions of a mother the mother can be mm-hmm. as attached and the mother can be equally detached is mm-hmm. only because of love that's the best way i can put it mm-hmm. love can bring you attachment and detachment <laughs> you know what else can you say it is so beautiful and she was there very quiet and i gave amrit very nice phrases to you know during the pollution i wanted him to sing that kirwani alap that uh, kanik sir had imagined you know there should be this beautiful alap coming behind he was so committed huh? he would never be satisfied he was to a point where i was telling it's going to be released tomorrow he texts me saying can i come and sing my parts again i said it already <laughs> i said it already sounds great why do you want to come and sing no 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 i heard it during the shoot i feel i can sing better this to me is the most promising thing for younger generations mm-hmm. it's always easy to be satisfied but if you see both the, it must be mentioned on times of india both the children have mentioned this i could have sung better mm-hmm. this is amazing this is very promising that's the intention also musically so the experience was just mirror of kaushiki ji but look at the output it's incredible and whenever i work on amrit ji's and bombay jayeshwi's voice together i would feel it like one voice oh. they were just clones so good because he has literally imbibed his mother's technique of singing his mother's vibrato as we call it you know that's exactly what he has exactly got it it's not that easy to capture that you know it changes from singer to singer he has just got the same texture the same intonation articulation that he brings to singing is very very similar to his mother so wow. the experience was fantastic and uh, they were bombay jayeshri ji was ace you know she came she was prepared she would sing i would just ask her to repeat a few things for probably technical corrections she was always perfect when she was singing amrit was also singing but never satisfied and my role is to find the balance between satisfaction and wanting more than satisfaction you know sometimes mm-hmm. when you record music there is a soul that comes with imperfection but when perfection comes you lose the soul of it okay this is a very oh, yeah. important part yeah. in art mm-hmm. you have to so my job is i don't look at the musical perfection alone i see which take when i record brings me that soul which suits the song so i would record multiple times and i choose which is the best one and i keep it it may have a bit of imperfection but it will touch your heart you know mm. so that's what i do okay mm-hmm. so finally uh, now that the video has released what is the mm. plans for it uh, i mean taking it in an uh, another pl- platform it's out on youtube so what more are you going planning with to do with this song to be honest uh, i was just thinking if iccw does a series of songs like this mm. there could be an album on spotify mm. it could be on itunes it could be on various media but uh, nandu sir has to answer this yeah see we need to uh, one is that we need to keep it alive for a long long time okay and when i'm saying alive it may it may sing in people's minds but it also should sing in in public you know it's not just that echo that plays in the mind you have to be playing it and more and more people should experience the song and uh, each time they listen to it from my personal experience i'm saying it it creates different emotions depending on you know the time of the day or what happened just before you started listening and it has to re- result in some action see from from our center point of view and from a larger context i mean i know that for sai and uh, for anix the song is is a, is is a kind of an end in itself certainly it is and i am looking at you know how the song can trigger people's imagination to do something back in terms of uh, uh, you know pol- not polluting or taking corrective action and participating in and that song will then reverberate even more mm. okay and uh, we would we would like to maybe create a sequel to this mm. subsequently and say look this was the scenario in 2020 21 maybe 5 years from now we might want to really share a different uh, you know a scenario which says hey things are better and the mm-hmm. song itself can talk about that as a continuum mm. right so this is something we i mean 
I'm thinking that it cannot end and just leaving it as a longing. But it's yeah. also showing there is a you know something come out and people can still feel good. And okay. people like uh, you know Rishit and all who would have grown up little more can look back and say how did they make a difference. Mm-hmm. So this is uh, certainly on the path somewhere. And we also want to complement it with with some kind of a, a companion book maybe, which mm-hmm. can have some some more pictures, some kind so that you enjoy the song more with a with a visual companion like a book, which will have some more information, which is you know sometimes difficult to capture and render in a in a movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is one and uh, we have other plans of uh, related videos mm-hmm. which i think kanik said mentioned uh, we have already shot that in terms of monsoons and mm-hmm. how the monsoon mm-hmm. is a that's the only source of water 95% 96% of water that we get is from the rains mm-hmm. the rest of it comes from the glaciers and the snow the rivers are only a resource they, they collect the rain water and then they sort of distribute it to people but if there is no rain there is no river mm. okay so how do we connect the monsoon and how do we conserve that water and how do we celebrate because today there are floods okay mm. monsoon people are afraid of so they stay indoor but we want mm. to bring out as a celebration and we want to connect it to life so because that is water and that is a source of life for us so that's the way we want to go about it okay, um, okay? and connecting with the emotions uh, is best done through music and uh, videos yeah and that is a powerful song and a powerful video also and uh, that that should be coming up um and related to that i want when you look at a long term perspective um in 2009 i composed something called the malhar concerto for uh, the world water conference in mm. that happened in um, singapore mm. and it it was played by a, a symphony orchestra it was uh, like a 10 minute long um symphonic score that i written based on the raga mia malhar that mm-hmm. was accompanied by a narrative on the importance of water conservation uh, uh, con- um, conservation and so on so i was just looking at the notes from that from 2009 and surprisingly the conversations that were relevant 12 years ago are still relevant today and they'll mm-hmm. continue to be relevant for the, for another 10 years but the thing is we we have measurable indices of progress and if the music becomes a, a catalyst to stimulate some, some of these uh, um, measurable indices Uh, so some of the growth in some of these in- indices and i think that we would have gone a long way in uh, um, doing that okay thanks a lot everyone it was nice having you on this show and it was yeah. great to yeah. hear about this story and uh, and it should uh, not be without actually the the visual component of it was handled by bharat bikram um, hmm. the video person in and subhash uh, and subhash and they uh, painstakingly went through filming the artists in chennai but we got video footage from calcutta mm-hmm. but then they got other footage from their uh, resources which with which they networked and they pulled the whole thing together and we had to go through many iterations to pull it together um mm-hmm. but finally i think um, this has come out like what we wanted it to be so and uh, and uh, f- from the words of many people that are listening to it they're emotionally moved just by looking at the message of uh, uh the, the reverence first the uh, damage next and the message of hope and the possibility of coming together the pandemic has kind of subdued everyone but hopefully um we are all praying for a better world and uh, once the better world ar- arises hopefully we'll be able to create more awareness about this okay. yeah so thanks video has played a very huge role we have discussed so much about music mm. the video has played an incredible role because nowadays video is a very important way to communicate things mm-hmm. if the same song would have just been released on spotify we wouldn't have had a momentum mm-hmm. after youtube and the social media that has come in people want to see it you know they want to hear the message there there are subtitles there is a story that comes so the video has conveyed the story that iccw wanted mm-hmm. and there has to be a mention of fantastic work by these two youngsters bharat and subhash Hmm. who were untiringly taking any input that we were throwing on them and they were editing it until the last day anything there was not once that they showed resistance so if you see again and again i come to this the intent was beautiful the everybody's intent was amazing mm-hmm. yeah thanks a lot nice to have you, you all on the show and it was great thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
so good. What a single yeah. song actually means to everyone and uh, the pains that you have gone through to produce this number. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.